Rick dropping in from the Bayou City, better known as H-Town. Look, it's another Melanated Monday, which means that it is Monday Manly Mandates. Uh, we're going to talk about the importance of, uh, of man having a vision. And um, we're the black voice. This is where we come to detoxify the melanated mind for the purpose of creating uh, a unified melanated mindset. Look, I'm not going to be long. This is a series of short videos where we're talking about the importance of defending and protecting uh, masculinity uh, that is consistently and constantly under attack, especially in the black community. Uh, through this series, we're going to talk about the importance of defending traditional black manhood, tr traditional masculinity in the total scope of all the different alternatives that are being presented. But we're also going to talk about different principles and different demands and different responsibilities that come along with the responsibility of manhood. So these videos are relatively short. Uh, when you think about who <laughs> who get who who's actually presenting it so look here we go all right this one is important that we listen to and this is going this is coming off of the responses uh to the video i did on detroit canceling uh the brian uh mcknight concert based on some of the things he said about his kids from his first marriage some of the things he did that were beyond questionable that I did bring out in that particular uh, video. And some of the responses that I uh, was pointed out to, because I don't necessarily come back and go, I don't go word for word, I don't do exchanges. I present what I present based on my experience, my knowledge, my expertise, and the history of what it is that we are talking about. And I let it rest. If somebody points out something that I may have missed or that I could be wrong on, I'll print a retraction, I'll address it, and then I'll log it. But um, I'm not here to argue. I'm not here to go through uh, debates for that reason. I'm here to ch exchange information and hopefully promote conversation that helps us grow. But anyway, so uh, for those who don't know, Brian McKnight has been having an ongoing battle with uh, his adult children. Um, from his first marriage and i'm not going to get into the details of it but there's two sides to every story but the bottom line is uh he remarried to a pacific islander i want to say hawaii um and they had a new kid brian changed his name because his oldest son is a junior he changed his middle name so that he could name his new son junior and the things that come out of that along with saying uh, that his children were evil and born or the product of sin. So that drew the ire of the people in Detroit, uh, in my opinion, rightfully so. Um, and I made it very clear that when I said this, that this wasn't my holding Brian accountable for what he said and his behavior was not exonerating any other any of the other parties involved for any wrongdoing they're doing but the fact that the man is supposed to be uh the one who is in control of his emotions the one who is leading by example the one who is able to get things under control and it, it's not always easy it doesn't always happen overnight but what you can't do is be propelled or pushed by your emotions one thing that a man has to do is master his emotions um, and that means not reacting to everything that's said. And definitely my biggest issue was his kids took it to social media and he jumped on. Uh, no matter what my kids do, no matter what uh, any of my family does, even down to my exes, no matter what they do, I'm not sharing or airing or uh, trying to justify whatever on social media. Um, as a man, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to resolve the issue and then I'm going to let the life that I live speak for me. That's a lesson that my grandmother taught me a long time ago. If you're living your life the best that you can, you're going to have some mistakes. You're going to have some hiccups. You're going to have some setbacks. But at the end of the day, your character and your integrity will speak of who you are and you won't have to. Something else my grandmother taught me was 
you don't have to defend the truth. It will defend itself. She said it's something like, it's like a lion set it loose and it will defend itself. Um, and she said, let the life that you live speak for you. Stop trying to prove to people who you are. Um, and so my thing was with that, but um, a lot of people emailed, commented, DM'd, inboxed about the number of men who were uh, in their in, 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 in their mindset victim blaming or blaming the ex for the behavior of the children um, and a bunch of other things. And I'm not going to get deep into that because I want to get to the point here. But I will say that, yes, it does happen. Children are used more than you think as weapons. And um, this, again, isn't to exonerate someone because I don't know the whole story and I'm not here for the gossip side of it here. I'm here for the lesson, which is manhood. And that's why I posted is this whole entire thing to me is about what we do as men. And one of the things that I see consistently is that the woman is supposed to submit. And since that particular ideology comes from uh, Judeo-Christianity uh, Judeo um, and maybe even G Judaism, uh, I'm going to use a biblical context to break it down. Um, and it primarily comes from Paul's letter to the church in uh, Ephesus, uh, the letter uh, to the Ephesians. And it, it has to be taken into context. And one thing that, that we tend to do when we start talking about scripture is taking it out of context, isolating it, making it a one standalone statement without understanding. You got to remember that this epistle our letter to the church in Ephesus was one letter. So everything in that letter is congruent. And so you have to really truly know the whole letter. So Paul is going through uh, the, the power and the gifts of the spirit and all these other different things. And now he's coming into something that he sees as a problem within the church in Ephesus. And that is conflict within the marriage. And so he addresses it as wife submit to the husbands. And when you look at the word, uh, that is being used, uh, hupostasos is a Greek word that basically means subject yourself. Now, the first thing you have to realize is he's talking to the wife, not the husband. It's not the husband's responsibility to make the wife uh, subject herself or in the words that we love to use, submit. He's talking to her, so he's telling her that she has to, and he's telling her that it's done in the same way that she would do it to him, to, to Christ. Uh, so then it is uh, submit yourself as unto the Lord. And so then that's it. But then she has to have something to submit herself to. But also, before we get to the thing that she needs to submit herself to, let's get to the thing that is immediately following it that none of the guys seem to ever read. They, don't, they, they stop at that line for whatever reason. It says, and husbands love your wife as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So then the sacrifice of the husband is greater than the sacrifice of the wife. She's giving herself to him, but he's giving herself to his, himself to it wholly as Christ did for the church. So there's this sacrifice, there's this love, there's this level of giving that goes beyond um, what you, in other words, that's got to be a level of love so deep that it's trusted and it's in the trust that the subjection happens. But we have to also understand that we're, since we're using the context of the Bible, we're going to go and use the entire context it says that the woman became the help me, that she was literally created as a helper. Then she has to have you have something that she's helping you do. What is your vision? What is your sight? or your vision or the things that you look at and say, this is what I'm going to do in the world. This is how I'm going to touch the world. This is the thing that I'm going to leave my imprint on because as men, we are built to accomplish things. That's why we have not accomplished a whole lot in the black community in the way of anything of any mass value, um, especially in the world of finance, because we are the doers. It's naturally wired in us. Now, women, have this unbelievable ability to incubate things. They'll take what you give them and they'll turn it into something bigger, something greater, something richer. You give them food, they 
create a meal. You give them your seed. They carry it for 40 weeks and bring you back at a child. You give them a house. They turn it into a home. I remember years ago giving somebody, one of my significant others, a car to give to my mom because I couldn't get over there. And when I got over there, like a couple of days later, uh, the card had all these words in it. My grandma said it was a $100 bill in it that I didn't put in there. It was a bunch of other stuff along with a rose. This is what a woman who is healthy does. And then that doesn't even take into consideration her spiritual wound. Uh, the ability to literally receive your vision and through an unbelievable process, expand it and give it life in ways that you cannot alone that's why there's supposed to be two all this i don't need i don't need i i got this i got that and that's going on now in this gender war doesn't consider the homeostasis uh that god designed when he put us together he said it's not good for him to be alone and he needs help i'm giving him a helper what, what is she helping with she's helping with the vision she's helping uh and, and another thing that I always talk about is the rib. Because, see, Adam, we're using the story of the creation. I'm not here to argue uh, the validity of it. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the story since this is what we use to create these arguments, right? So Adam was created from the dust of the earth, but Eve was not. Eve was created from the rib of Adam. And uh, to me, it has significance. The rib is a part of the musculoskeletal part of the body. And the rib is a protective cage that protects the vital organs, uh, which are weak and vulnerable uh, when exposed from harm, from external harm. Well, the woman is the rib. That means that the woman, when she is healthy, does not expose the weaknesses of her man. She does not malign them. She does not share them with others. She comes alongside him and covers them until he strengthens them and gives him the confidence and the courage to go out and do the things that he is designed to do. This is a compilation. This is a correlation. This is something that is brought together and it takes two. And the thing is, you can't make a woman submit. Matter of fact, the more you try to make her, the more you will force her away and more you will force a shell to come over her as she starts to... Um, activate the masculine energy she does have to defend and protect herself because you aren't making her feel safe and and don't get me wrong that, that this isn't coming in i've been saying this for uh, how long 20 something years since well at least 14 years since i've been on social media but i've been saying it long before that that I don't preach, teach, or lecture from a platform of perfection. So I'm not here yelling at you like I've always got it right or I always do it right or that I have things figured out. I'm a man that's trying to get somewhere. And every day I want to be a little bit closer to where I'm trying to get. And I want to help as many people as I possibly can get there. And so that's the platform that I'm coming from. But I also have a standard. Um, that I hold myself to. I want to be the best version of myself. I want to um, be a light when so much darkness exists. And it's not easy because there's always other things pressing on you. Like, you know, for me, yesterday was a real hard day. It was the first Mother's Day. Even though I'm not real big on holidays, everybody's talking about mom. And it's every time you hear the word mom, it's a reminder. And so yesterday was one of those days. But at the same time, you got to look at around you and know when someone needs you to be kind to them. Someone needs you uh, to speak life. And sometimes you're speaking life and you're not only encouraging someone else, you're encouraging yourself because you're feeling like you're in the darkness as well. But I want to come back to what I was saying with this whole uh, help me thing. When she, when she knows where you're taking her. And I'm not talking so much physically, but physically, I'm talking about, can she buy into your vision? 
can she look and say, I want to be the woman to the man that's going to do that? And then can she see how she fits? Because the more you reveal of you and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to touch. Um, this is the impact I want to have on this world. This is the legacy I want to leave. And she can see how she plays a role in that. She'll lean into it. And that is our responsibility. But what we cannot be caught up in is throwing tantrums. Why this won't happen? Why that don't happen? Um, sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's not. But you can't throw tantrums. You have to figure it out. You have to determine. Maybe it might not be the person for you. That may be a dark reality that the person that you're connected to isn't for you then you make a choice and make a decision to say okay i'm going to respectfully and maturely sever this relationship and move on and be clear become even clear even more clear about what it is that i do desire but a lot of times almost almost all the time it can work it's going to require work it's going to require sacrifice. It's going to require coming out of your comfort zone. It's going to require you sitting up and twisting and turning and nodding up because it's not about the best. One of the most powerful books I read was Sacred Marriage. It was when I was writing my first book on marriage, which was 20 years ago, uh, When Your House Is Not a Home. And the cover of the book set the tone from which I read it and the tone from which I wrote that book. And it simply said, what if God's purpose for marriage was more um, about your was more about your holiness than your happiness? What if the most challenging thing you was going to do was going to be to love someone else and live with them for the rest of your life and get through the difficult moments and break through the barriers of you know, I mean, think about it now. All you got to do is say you're not happy and you can walk away from a full-fledged marriage in today's culture because nothing is valued in that anymore. But what if God meant you to sit up and say, this is where I'm going to learn how to stay in. This is where I'm going to learn how to love outside of my feelings and my emotions. To love because it's what I'm built to do. Love because it's my responsibility and obligation. Love because it's my covenant. Love because it's what God designed. And then what happens when that particular attitude permeates into the rest of your life? So now you stop acting and reacting to things. You start responding based off of responsibility and commitment versus how I feel at the moment and what I don't want to do and how I don't feel. I mean, it's not going to be. I'm telling you from experience, it's not it's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be rewarding. That's the thing. So my challenge to brothers is instead of focusing so much on what she's not doing, let us start to look at what we ought to be doing. Uh, and again, this isn't an exoneration or an exemption of responsibility from our fairer partners. It's about leadership. It's about saying, if I want to be a leader, there's something that comes with that. And it's not, you know, you, you want the glory, but you don't want the process and everything that comes along with it. So that's that's it for me. I went way over what I was supposed to do, uh, but this was a little deep. And I kind of wanted to really close out this whole thing on Brian McKnight. Um, my kids are my kids. The oldest is 38. She'll be 39 in September. The youngest is 10, and most of them are adults. All but two want to be an adult legally uh, next month. So I'll have one that's not an adult after next month. But they're all still mine. I'll be parenting them until I take my last breath. 
but I understand that they're their own people now and they can have their right to not be on the same page with me, not agree with me and be at odds with me. And that's good. But my, my, my response is I always hate when you feel like talking about it, you know where to find me. I'm never not accessible, but I will not be disrespected and I will not come on social media when they go on social media and throw a temper tantrum. And we as men need to develop a, a skin that's thicker than that anyway. I mean, I don't care what people on social media think about me. I'm going to give you the best I got. Some people are going to love me. Some people are going to hate me. Some people are going to believe me. Some people are going to have it. I could care less. You know, and maybe that's why I don't have a, a, a million followers is because I'm not playing to the crowd. I'm not trying to accept. Because at some point, because I'm I'm focused on the truth. I'm kicking toes. Everybody going to get it at some point, including me. So what that means is at some point you're going to get pissed off. And what I found out, we so fickle that the moment someone says something we don't like, we unsubscribe. So we don't want to learn. We want what we hold in our own thought processes to be confirmed. And the problem is, if what you have in your thought processes isn't what's going to get you over the hump, having it confirmed does you no good. So, again, I'm going to leave you with that, but I just had to share it. Look, I really appreciate what we're doing, but we're really making some turns and moves here at the Black Voice Odyssey Project. And we are moving towards a universal, a, a universal unified, collective, melanated mindset. This is about growth. This is about development. This is about unification and uh, creating a unified, universal agenda. Uh, some things that we need to focus on and build. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I said this and then I'm done. I said this probably 21 years ago in an interview that we will only get as high as our women can spiritually elevate us and as far as our men can physically lead us. And we're going to, it's going to require men who are willing to invest and plant seeds that we may not live long enough to see come to fruition. And what that means is you don't undo 400 years of oppression, 246 years of chattel slavery, 12 years of reconstruction, 18 years of black codes, black codes and uh, convict leasing, 75 years of Jim Crow segregation, another 50 years of gentrification, mass incarceration and miseducation with some quick fix in a couple of years. That means there's a generation that's being born that we've got to protect from all these things that are moving against them. And we've got to build in them the things that they need to be able to grow up and to overcome the things that have been in front of us. All the mechanisms and machinations that are placed in front of them, we have the answers, but we've got to be willing to commit. The problem is we have so little acknowledgement as men, we want the quick pat on the back. We want to say, hey, I did that. And the truth is, the thing you may do may not get finished until you're gone. And you got to be okay with that because it's going to bless your seed. It's going to bless your lineage. It's going to contribute to your legacy. These are the things that I want us to really start to be willing to commit to. I'm leaving a legacy. The first half of my life was about me what I could do, what I could drive, where I could go, what I can prove. The second half has been about a legacy. Not always been easy. It's not always been peaches and cream, but I'm laying a legacy. I'm touching lives. I have touched lives and I will touch more until I take my last breath. But that's the commitment we need. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special 
announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.